over this minute span of astronomical time. The stars containing the most mass end their lives cataclysmically, destroying themselves in titanic stellar explosions known as supernovae. For a few glorious months, each becomes one of the brightest objects in the entire universe, outshining all the other stars in its parent galaxy. Since its launch in 1990, Hubble has watched the drama unfold in Supernova 1987A, the nearest exploding star in modern times. The telescope has been monitoring a ring of gas surrounding the supernova blast. Hubble has observed the appearance of bright spots along the ring, like gemstones on a necklace. These cosmic pearls are now being lit by supersonic shocks unleashed during the explosion of the star. The ruins of an exploding star can hide a powerful engine. Hubble has probed the mysterious heart of the Crab Nebula, the tattered remains of an exploding star, vividly described by Chinese astronomers in 1054, and has revealed its dynamic center. The innermost region of this nebula harbors a special type of star, a pulsar. Like a beacon, this star rotates, emitting energy and light in a beam, and it powers the vast nebula of dust and gas surrounding it. However, not all stars end their lives so violently. Sun-like stars cool down once they run out of hydrogen. The center collapses in on itself and the heavier elements are burnt, causing the outer layers to expand and leak slowly into space. At this stage in a star's life, it's called a red giant, our Sun will become a red giant in a few billion years. At that time, it will expand so much that it will swallow Mercury, Venus and our planet too. But these stars are not finished quite yet. They can still become something quite extraordinary. Just before they breathe their last breath, stars like our Sun go out in a final blaze of glory. In its final stages of nuclear fusion, stellar winds blow from the star, causing the red giant to swell to an enormous size. At the heart of this expansion, the exposed heart of the star floods the gaseous envelope with powerful ultraviolet light making it glow. Because to early telescopic astronomers these amazing constructions looked a bit like the newly discovered planet Uranus, they became known as planetary nebulae. Hubble's keen perception shows that planetary nebulae are like butterflies. No two are alike. Hubble's dazzling collection of planetary nebulae show surprisingly intricate glowing patterns. Pinwheels, swirling jets, elegant goblet shapes, barrel shapes, or even rocket engine exhausts. Position high above the distorting atmosphere, Hubble is the only telescope that can observe the swollen outer envelope of these dying stars in full detail. Here we flip back and forth between Hubble images from 1994 and 2002. One of the greatest mysteries in modern astrophysics is how a simple spherical gas ball such as our Sun can give rise to these intricate structures. For some planetary nebulae, it is as if a cosmic garden sprinkler created the jets that stream out in opposite directions. Or could these amazing patterns possibly be sculpted by the magnetic field of a companion star that funnels the emitted gas into a jet? Whatever their cause, in only 10,000 years, these fleeting cosmic flowers disperse in space. Just as real flowers fertilize their surroundings as they decompose, 
The chemical elements produced inside the star during its life are dispersed by the planetary nebula to nourish the space around it, providing the raw material for new generations of stars, planets and possibly even life. Because they disappear so quickly on a cosmic time scale, there are never more than about 15,000 planetary nebulae at any one time in our Milky Way. A more lasting monument to the dead star is the tiny heart it leaves behind. Known as a white dwarf, each of these exceptionally dense Earth-sized stars are fated to spend the rest of eternity gradually leaking their residual heat into space until eventually, in many billions of years, they approach the frigid, minus 270 degrees centigrade of space. We live inside a huge star system, or galaxy, known as the Milky Way. Seen from the outside, the Milky Way is a gigantic spiral consisting of a central hub embraced by long arms. The whole system slowly rotates. Between the stars, there are vast amounts of dust and gas that we can see, and some unknown material called dark matter that remains invisible to us. Far from the center, out in one of the spiral arms, the suburbs of the Milky Way, there's a tiny star system, our home, the solar system. When we look up on a clear night, we can see about 5,000 of the closest stars. Our eyes struggle to see beyond a thousand light years because of the dust that blankets space and dims the distant starlight. So without a telescope, we can only see a minute portion of the entire 100,000 light year wide Milky Way. For the Milky Way contains several hundred billion stars, many like our own Sun, although several hundred thousand million is an almost unfathomable number it is only the beginning. Astronomers believe there are more than a hundred billion galaxies in the universe. How many stars would that be? In a handful of sand there can easily be 50,000 individual grains. Our Milky Way contains so many stars there can scarcely be enough grains of sand on a whole beach. There are so many galaxies containing so many stars in the universe that we would have to count every grain of sand on every beach on the whole Earth in order even to come close to the right number and then there would be more stars in the universe. Let's take this grain of sand a millimetre across and place it here to represent the Sun. If we were to start walking towards the nearest star, it would take us the best part of a day to get there. We'd have to travel something like 30 kilometers. So galaxies are mostly large collections of emptiness. If we could squeeze together all the stars in the Milky Way, they would easily fit into the volume of space between our Sun and the nearest star. In fact, to completely fill that volume, we would have to pack in all the stars from all the galaxies in the entire universe. When looking at the night sky, the universe seems motionless. This is because our lifespans are nothing but brief drops in the universal ocean of time. In fact, the universe is in constant motion, but we would need to watch for vastly longer than a lifetime to perceive that motion in the night sky. Given enough time, 
we would see stars and galaxies move. Stars orbit the center of the Milky Way and galaxies are pulled together by each other's gravity. Sometimes they even collide. Hubble has observed